Thanks to Best Buy for sponsoring this video. It's no secret on this channel that I have some love for the 4060. Now, not necessarily for a typical desktop size card. I think that has some cost of performance issues there, but for its efficiency and what it's enabling for very small builds. Now, since October of last year, I have built five tiny sub five liter 4060 PCs, one of which is in a custom case that I designed myself as kind of an all-in-one mini PC. But all of those have something very obvious in common. They're actually in an enclosure, which is why I thought it would be interesting to check out something a little bit different. This is the Xworks X32, an open air case that's more of a frame than a case. Now, starting with the CPU, this is the Ryzen 5 7600. The 7600 and the 7600X have been my go-to recommendations when you want to prioritize GPU performance because, well, they are more than fast enough for all of today's games. They are almost always priced within $10 of each other, with the 7600 including a CPU cooler and a lower TDP. But the 7600X does have a slight performance advantage, so we're not going to be needing that included cooler in this build, as we're going to be using our own. But that lower 65 watt TDP makes more sense matched with this low profile cooler in my opinion. So I'm going to be saving the 7600X for another build. This is a current generation CPU on the newest platform, so you're getting high performance today and upgradability for the future. We have six cores, 12 threads, which is more than most of today's games will utilize, and I would personally use the CPU paired up with something like a 4070 Ti Super. As for the board we're gonna be plugging this into, I'm going with the ROG Strix B650EI from ASUS. This is a board I use all the time, it's easily my favorite, it looks good, it's easy to work with, has all of the headers that you would typically need, and no extra dongles or an overcomplicated setup. Mini ITX, especially newer AM5 boards, are fairly expensive, which makes building ITX on a budget a bit more challenging. And this board is no exception there. It is quite pricey for a B-series board at $300, however, more reasonable options have become available recently. Gigabyte has a very good A-series board available, Problem there is that the IO shield is not built in, which is kind of needed here if that's something that you want. But ASRock also has a very good A-series board that I'm going to be checking out in an upcoming build, which does have an IO shield built in, and it's at a pretty reasonable price for ITX standards at $140. So the ASUS one I have here has Wi-Fi 6E and 2.5 gigabit ethernet. We've also got plenty of USB ports, including a couple of Type-C ports. All of this is kind of important because this frame doesn't have any additional USB. So what you've got on the back of the motherboard is all you're gonna get without the use of any hubs or things like that. While what we're building here is a small PC that is definitely portable enough to take to a friend's house or a LAN party, it's probably not something you're gonna wanna bring with you on a daily basis. A good companion device that is far more portable would be something like this new Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge that I've been checking out thanks to this video's sponsor, Best Buy. So this might just be one of the most exciting things to happen to Windows laptops in a very long time. This Galaxy Book's got a very unassuming but sleek look on the outside, and it's also really thin, but the more exciting part is what's happening on the inside. This is one of the first laptops to have the new Snapdragon X Elite processor, which also makes it one of the first Copilot Plus PCs, the fastest and the most intelligent Windows PCs ever. So the first major benefit here is the insane battery life that you're going to get from this super efficient CPU, which is practically unheard of in a Windows laptop. But with that, you're still not giving up performance as these new chips are incredibly fast. I feel like the Samsung ecosystem also doesn't get talked about enough. You can connect to your phone to make phone calls, send some text messages, along with a bunch of other stuff from your laptop using Copilot and Galaxy AI. And with the co-pilot button, you're able to type prompts or you can use the microphone to tell your phone to do whatever you want. Text Wendy and let her know I'll be home at five. Certainly. I'll send that message to Wendy for you. So if you wanna check one out for yourself, I'll leave a link in the description. If you watched any of my previous videos, then you already know what I'm gonna say about the RAM. DDR5-6000 is the way to go. And this set I've got from Crucial has a cast latency of 36 and a first word latency of 12 nanoseconds, which if you don't know what any of that means, just know that it's plenty fast and you can pick this 32 gig setup for around $100. So DDR5 has gotten much cheaper, which also sets us up nicely to have a build that will perform well today and last a long time so that if you ever wanna upgrade your GPU in a few years, you'll be set everywhere else. We have basically unlimited CPU cooling clearance here, but 
you know, I want to keep this build looking tidy and compact, so I'll actually be using an ultra low profile Noctua NH-L9A cooler. This one is only at 37 millimeters in height, so it's not going to extend past the VRM heat sinks and the RAM keeping it all nice and compact. I've used this several times with the 7600 and the LGA 1700 version of this cooler with the Intel 13400. And I've also been very happy with the performance, but I would stick to 65 watt TDP CPUs on this one, unless you're okay with undervolting and doing all of that. All right, now it's actually time to put together the frame. This case or whatever you wanna call it is from a company called Xworks, and this is the X32. Now the chassis on its own is claimed to be about 3.2 liters, but that does not take into account an assembled system, which I measured mine here at around 4.13 liters. So it's not the absolute smallest 4060 build that you can do, but that's also not really the point here. It's a showcase build that also only uses a small footprint on your desk. The pieces are super high quality and the packaging is very organized, which does help keep this build process a bit more streamlined and organized, which I appreciate. I also really like that they put the hardware in these plastic dividers. This just makes things so much easier to follow along and it shows that they really put a lot of care into this case. All of these metal pieces here are made of a 1.8 millimeter black powder coated steel, along with a few stainless steel accents like the handle and power button. All right, so starting off this assembly, we just have a couple of rubber pads to stick to the bottom. Then we can grab the stainless steel power button and secure that to the dedicated hole on the motherboard side panel. And then we can attach the handle. What's pretty smart here is that we attach the handle with a couple of standoffs that are also going to be used to secure that second panel later on. Then we can secure the motherboard standoffs and that's the first panel prepped. So let's grab the GPU side panel, secure the two standoffs at the bottom. That's the second set that will fasten these two halves together. And just like the motherboard side, we have a couple of standoffs that we need to secure to this one as well. Only this will be for the included riser cable, which we can also screw in at this point. Next up is the power supply installation. So Xworks has a list of power supplies that have been tested to fit into this case. Mine is on that list, but I don't really know if I'd recommend this one for this build personally. If you can find a modular flex ATX power supply, I would definitely go with that. So securing it to the metal shroud isn't too big of a deal, but these cables are a little stiff and with a bit too much slack it's actually really difficult to manage them, especially later on. Okay, so now let's secure the shroud to the GPU side panel. And what's really clever here is that the cutout at the top of the shroud perfectly fits around the riser cable, hiding most of it. Once we route our power cables for the GPU, it's time to join these two pieces together. For the GPU, I'm gonna be using the Zotac Single Fan 4060. The main reason, obviously, being its form factor. This case was clearly designed around this style GPU, and I mean, you could put whatever you want in here, assuming that you can power it, which is actually kind of cool, even if it could look a little bit silly. I've seen there's a new single fan 4070 out as well. Would love to get my hands on that if I can, but until then, the 4060 is well more than enough for now. Now, this is also not really a cut down version of the 4060. It's the full deal with the same 115 watt requirement and a boost clock up to 2,460 megahertz. It's just with this one, we got that shorter 163 millimeter length, which will fit perfectly here. So first let's just install this little GPU mount bracket to the side, and then we can slide the GPU easily into the slot in the riser cable. After that, we can just fasten it with a thumb screw and lock nut. Now comes probably the hardest part of this build, at least it was for me and that's installing the motherboard. So obviously fastening a motherboard is simple, but because of my choice in power supply, these cables are making things really difficult. What I ended up doing is first routing the power and the power cable buttons to the correct spots. Then, I mean, really just working with these power cables the best that I could, trying to lay them out in different positions so that they're not bunching up too much under the board so that I can actually make room to install it. So it took a little bit of work, but eventually I was able to get enough room to sit the board down onto the standoffs and secure it. And with that, the build is complete. Okay, so now that I got a fresh install of Windows here, I've downloaded a few games, a few benchmarks, and my monitoring software. I also turned on the Expo profile in the BIOS so that we can get those advertised RAM speeds. I also turned off PBO, as that's gonna give us much better temps with this tiny cooler. So gaming performance is exactly what you would expect out of a 4060. It's all well documented at this point, and this is gonna be no exception. I've actually showcased this CPU-GPU combo many times on this channel, so you're gonna get great 1080p performance and 1440p performance, especially if you utilize DLSS and frame generation. What might be slightly different is the thermals. Now let's test out our GPU thermals with Furmark. 
And at 1440p, after a 10 minute run, I'm seeing the GPU max out at 74 degrees Celsius. So noise levels are also very silent as well. I'm measuring it at 42 decibels, which for me sitting about a foot from the PC, I can barely hear it. Not having case fans and the like is definitely helping keep those noise levels low. One of my most popular videos is on an open frame like this. And by far the most common concern among the comments was dust. Because you're really not going to be able to avoid some level of dust in your components with nothing creating a barrier. And I somewhat agree with the commenters. All of your components are exposed, but I mean, most of these smaller cases don't come with much in the way of dust filters. So you're gonna have some buildup regardless. If anything, it's pretty convenient just to have a can of air handy to blow it off once a month or so. I think the bigger downside to something like this is that if you have any small kids or pets, you don't want them yanking at something or touching the fans when they're on, or maybe you just don't have any self-control, stuff like that. It's also not something that you're gonna wanna throw in the trunk of your car to take to a friend's house as is. You'll likely need to protect it by like putting it in a box or something. The Velga 3 or the Gemk C9 would make a much better option here for that kind of use case. Personally, I think this makes a nice showcase for the parts while not taking up too much space on your desk. This is definitely more of an enthusiast thing, not something meant for a wide audience appeal. But anyways, what do you think? Would you build something like this and have it on your desk? Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.